Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we're looking at pencils. No, no, I really mean it. We're actually looking at pencils. Now, okay, disclaimer time. You're either going to be one of two camps on this particular one. You're either going to be thinking, okay, AK are at it again, and they're basically just rebranding another product, putting their name onto it, charging a few more quid, knocking it out the door, okay? Or you're thinking, do you know what? That's probably one of those that's gonna be quite handy to use, um, and I'll give it a whirl, okay? And from my point of view, when these were first announced uh, a good few months ago now, I was extremely skeptical. To the point where I was thinking, really, God, what are they going to be inventing next? Water? You know, it, it's just one of those things. And to be honest, a lot of products, um, a little bit like fashion and like music and things like that, they're very popular, then they fall out of vogue, and then they're forgotten about by a majority of modelers. And then all of a sudden, a company might put a spin on it. And uh, before you know it, it's the latest and greatest modeling idea. And we all buy into it, and we all buy loads of it. And there's only a few people that think, hold on, didn't we do this like 20, 30 years ago? Okay, through another product and things like that. This technically, I think, is one of those things. And I can tell you why. In the 1990s, I bought a set of Faber-Castell water pencils, okay, which I used for weathering. Very subtle weathering, admittedly, but uh, in those days, I wasn't very good at weathering. I certainly hadn't moved on to things like oils. Uh, I wasn't a fan of enamels. Uh, so there's lots of reasons for doing this particular uh, type of thing, um, and I did, and I've had these ever since. And to be honest with you, in opening up our little thing in here, you can probably see how much I've actually used of them. Because when you're looking in here, you can see I'm a color missing. And the color that mis is missing is actually black. Okay, and we've got all the other colors down in here, but I'm literally just missing the black. The reason I'm missing the black, and I'll be honest with you, I used to use it a lot back in the day. Uh, and then it got used for other things, so forth and so on. And now I haven't got it. Okay, and then lo and behold, I was having a hunt around here earlier and I still don't know what I've done, but I think it used to be on my repertoire of things around here that I used to use, and I've probably used it for writing or something, and I've lost it. But that's what I mean. So what we're gonna to do today is really have a go with them. See if it is just a watercolor pencil. See how it's actually gonna work, and then do a, a more honest review. Because obviously, a lot of the time, I'm quite skeptical about you know various products that come along, and I'm thinking, isn't that just like thinned paint in a lot of cases? Or you know, couldn't you just buy like a tube of Aptilung or good quality oil and make up your own, or and things like that? But this is one of those ones where you know I'm, I'm literally drawn in two counts. I know about this particular technique. I used to use it myself. Now I must admit, I moved on to oils, and I find I get a lot more blending and there's a lot more control with oils over these. These are too subtle for what I'd like to achieve, especially with my, you know, my modeling styles and things like that. But basically, if we just have a little bit closer look, let's talk about actually what we've got here. So down in front, we've got, and there is a huge range, and if I pop up a picture here, this is the range that we actually stock at the PM store with them all in. So <clears throat> you can imagine, you know, you could buy the entire lot, but a lot of the time you can buy them in different sets. So there's a multiple sets out there that obviously from sci-fi, from armor to rust to grays and all these things. But what I've done is uh, when I was up at the PM store uh, this week, um, I picked up a handful just to have a go at and have a play with. Now this is literally how they will come to you. You can buy them as individuals and say you buy them in sets, all right? So I've got a couple of it. So we've got rain marks and dust. Okay, we've got light rust. We've got a, a streaking dirt. Okay, we've got a chipping color and we've got a dark rust, okay, because they're the type of colors I use, or I use these particular colors in pretty much my everyday stuff. So like my washes follow this line, you know, you've got one called dust and rain marks to me, that's our gray type of wash. We've got the rust, so, you know, in our pigment family and with the wash family, we've got dark and, and light rust, so I thought we'd try those. Chipping color and uh, streaking dirt, I couldn't work out which ones they were off the top. It looks like streaking dirt seems to be almost like our dark, dirt color and then obviously probably our medium earth as a pigment and things like that so that's what I was trying to do and that way I can do a comparison against them so what are they again they are a watercolor pencil so what that actually means is you can draw use it just neat as a pencil and put it on and you'll get some nice sort of gray effects and things like that and really just like any other pencil would happen but you can mix it with a splash of water and then it will actually just uh, make it flow and make it run so forth and so on so you know doing watercolor pictures and drawings that's the type of effect you're going to get what we've got is buster poor old buster gets another outing down in here and i thought we could have a play with him on this because we've got two types 
types of surface. We've got a flat surface and we've got a bit more of a shiny one here. This is a lot more flatter over on this side, but we thought we could be that sort of standard smooth paint and then see what happens on here, perhaps with the washes. So really what you would do, if you were using them dry, and that's come out streaking because obviously this is like the grimy type of colour. So actually what you can actually do is use them like a physical pencil. Okay, so you can just come along here and if we just trace around some panel lines and we'll just come in with them, you can see you can literally do this type of action with them. And again, if you sharpen them up to a nice edge, you can actually do some quite nice effects with them, so forth and so on, okay? And that's literally how they the work in the dryness of this one. And the great thing is, uh, and being honest with you, the reason I used to use them is because uh, I was rubbish at airbrushing and any type of weathering. So this was a quick and very, very easy way of doing it. So if you were doing it for sort of panel liney type things, and again, we're a little bit of a mess all over these, but you get the, the impression. You can just come along and you can put them all down literally like this. Okay, and you can put them in. Now, there's a couple of little different techniques you can do with these. Um, obviously, they talk about it with water and all these things. What I like to do is the cotton bud technique. So you've got a cotton bud, and you can somewhat blend these around a little bit. They're a little bit waxy, but you can sort of blend them around, and you can fade them, and you can get them in all these areas just like that, and really sort of go to town with it like it. But if you wet things, that's when it changes. And again, very much like a clay wash, for instance, like our wash, things like that, the more you wet it, the more it goes. So as long as you don't put too much water, you don't dilute it too much, uh, you'll be absolutely fine. The trouble with these pencils have been always, and it doesn't matter who you're using, if you make it too wet, you'll just lose the, the, the image of it, if you like, the actual, the whole point of it being there, it just washes away because it goes too thin, all right? So I'm gonna lick it, okay? And then we'll just do back of the hand. And then what we're going to do, we're going to subtly just pop round these. And as you can see, you can wet them up. And then depending on the colour you can do, you can start to make sort of staining and all these things like this. Okay. And to be honest with you, I think too many people hit this with too much water and that's why they've been having bad effects with them. Okay, and then you can start to do this. Now what happens is this will dry and you'll be left with this sort of smudged mark down in there just like that. So if you wanted to do uh, various things, and let's say if you're doing aircraft and you want to do panels and stuff like that, then obviously you could come along with a grey pencil and you could actually put these in and get those sort of, you know, technically those anti-corrosion marks and things like that in there. So if we flip over onto this side, I'll show you what we mean. So we just do some of these bigger ones. So we're just going to come in down in here with these, okay, and to be honest, this is a good example. I've lost pretty much all the detail on this because of all the work that this poor old buster's had over the years. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna come in with a few of these and we're just gonna pop them around like this. Okay, and then we'll make up a few fictitious -y things. Okay, on this one, so we'll just pretend it sort of goes a bit like this. Okay, and maybe we'll just come in down in here. And again, this is one of those ones where it's quite nice because you can be incredibly precise, even if you haven't got the a panel line there. It's a lot easier to do this than it would be if you were doing it in any other way. Okay, and then perhaps we'll just put a little bit around down here and around. And again, you can use the edge of this just to put various things in, and that's just. Again, some of these are completely fictitious, so I'm putting these in. Okay, so you just put them around like that. Then you can do this again. So we just grab a clean cotton bud. Again, you don't want to overdo this, so if you buy moisten it by just licking it, then knock a bit off the back of your hand. Okay, and then you can sort of come around in these. Because as soon as you overdo this, this has a habit of vanishing because it's a really subtle technique. And also the big thing is you want to do this over a flat type of surface. And as you can see, we've got some now, catch it in the light, you can see it, what we're trying to achieve there, down in there. And as this is drying off, because it's on the brown, you can see 
this type of marking with it. All right, so that's it. Now, to be honest with you, that's my technique for doing it. Haven't seen too many people on the internet. I had a bit of a flick around this morning just to see how people use it and as if I'm going mad, okay? But I'll, the other way of doing it literally is, is that, you know, you can come along and you can cause uh, rain marks and streaking and all these things and again they're very old sort of techniques so you can just come along with these and then we'll just do some rain marks and various things coming down and then what you can actually do is grab a little bit of water so we'll just do a little bit of water just down in here you can grab a nice clean brush and again knock off as much as you can and then by overcoating you can make nice little streaking effects okay and you can come in but again the big thing with this and you have to be mindful of this is that it doesn't take much to lose your the image okay or lose the effects because you'll wash this straight away but there we go that's those down on there like that and let's try a little bit of rusty thing so let's just up the rusty game so we're just going to put a couple of rusty streaks in here Okay, so we're just going to do a bit, couple of different colours, a bit more water, rub all the water off. Okay, so think of it like oils. You know when you're doing oils and if you do too much oils, it suddenly you lose that look because you've over thinned it. This is exactly the same with these. Okay, so and again, you can probably see at this end, you notice how we're suddenly getting a lot more um, and that's because there's not as much on the brush. So we're sort of, you know, we can hydrate it and we can drag it and we can do various chippies and stainings and things what we got dark brushed so we go with that but if i can give you one tip for doing this from the old school way of doing it is to overdo this so put on plenty of pencil work because you do tend to lose it okay so we're just going to come in with some rusty and you can see how much this all goes and fades and it comes down so again it's halfway between being an oil and being a pigment you know so you can just come along the only thing is i would say pick your colors carefully because i'm not a fan particularly of these colors on here but you get the idea of what you can achieve with this and then obviously you can come in and do various other things so if you wanted to we'll just lightly color in this entire area here okay and then obviously we've got this said guy we're not coming in with gallons of water and we'll blend this around a bit okay and you can see how we can blend over high areas okay. but it boy can you overdo this really really quickly as in lose the lot by over wetting anything you do but there we go see you can put these things in you know and the more you do on these and the more you play with it the more you get the idea but i'll just show you so we've got a little bit of water on your brush and you sort of come along with this one and we can use it as a sort of a filter. Okay, but you really have to be mindful because it's very, very easy to go over the top with this. Okay, and then once it's in, you can use it for somewhat for streaking. But I'm being honest, it's more of an armor technique than it certainly is on aircraft. You can do this sort of, you know, we haven't really got the best colors for it down here, but as this is drying off now, you can see what we achieved down in there. So if you were looking for that type of effect, you'd have no problem with it. But if you were, you know, you're trying to do this type of effect will actually roll through quite nicely. But that's the thing with them. At the end of the day, and just to show you the comparison, we have our favors here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to grab this grey colour. Okay, so you know, to be honest, these are, as I said, are Faber Castells, which were my uh, chosen one. Okay, um, so if we just we're just going to put some dirt marks in this. All right, so we're just going to pretend we got some dirt coming out of some of these areas okay so you just 
scritch them on like that. We're going to grab our brush, knock off the excess or a lot of the excess off, and then we can come in. And as you can see, it's no difference from what we've got. We can cause exactly the same effects and everything with our Faber here as we can with anything else. And again, we can just come along and then you can sharpen up. The other little technique you can do, you can pre-wet the area. So let's just go here. So we're going to put a generous amount of water just down in here. And then streaking dirt, let's use this. And then we're going to go over it. And you will see how it sort of blends. Because now it's, it's literally turning like a brush. And that's because there's water here and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's water soluble. And it's now turning to a thin watercolour paint. Literally like that. And then again, you can manoeuvre it round, take a little bit of water. Okay, you can grab some of this just down in here, and then you can think, okay, we'll put a little bit down in here, and a little bit in here. You can take a little bit of this, and let's make some over here. So you get a little palette on the go. Okay. You can do numerous different techniques with this right the way through, you see. As we were saying about before, and then once it's in like this, you can take your cotton bud, you can do sort of streaky effects with it. And all these different things right the way over it. Okay, hopefully, just to test here, if you don't like it, wet a cotton bud, and you should be able to get most of this back off. Okay, so you So pretty much all of that just comes off. And then again, let that dry. And you can just go again at it. Okay, and then you can start coming in going, right, okay, we want to do this panel line business again, and right the way over, and all of this, and you can carry on. Okay, right the way through. But really, the, I suppose the thing is, is that if I'm being honest, this is one of those ones which is more for specific tiny little details. If you're working on armor especially, trying to get in and amongst a lot of the detail and perhaps you've got like stowage equipment and stuff like that, it's quite easy to get in there with a pencil and a little bit of water just to maneuver it all around and stuff like that. Is it a waste of money? Okay, and this is where I will be God's honest truth. As you know, I sell these. This is the whole point to this. Okay, we have a store, we have them in stock and everything else. I think it's one of those things where it is just another tool in your toolbox. I don't think they are completely um, useless because at the end of the day, if you're gonna go out and buy a set of Faber Castells, you've got two things, okay? Firstly, they don't do all the colors that obviously we've got down in here, because this is pretty much their standard range, all right? So you're off. And also, pencil for pencil, they're the same price. So it's not like these are massively more expensive. They're roughly around about the same price. I think we charge around about 125 for your pencil for them. And when I look online, unless you're gonna go bulk and all the rest of it, that's roughly what a Faber will cost you anyway. So at the end of the day, I think it's one of those areas where it's a tool, it's a little bit of equipment. I don't think you need to go out and buy box fulls and all the rest of it. I think it's very easy to go over the top with it and lose some of the details in there. But you know, if you look at Buster, what we've achieved with him and everything else, and again, once you learn how to use this stuff, you can do various things like blending and all this good stuff down in here. That's far too wet. But you know, once it's in and you've got this thing sort of active, you can smudge it around and you can do various things. Uh, just like this right the way through with them okay but I will eat a little bit of humble pie because I just thought they were a gimmick but they're not too expensive they're the same price it might be worth just getting a few little ones for it if you've had trouble with things like rain marks and streaking and stuff like that this is an easy technique because you can actually go up to your model for the first time and go okay I want one just there and I want one just there and I want one there because you've literally got a pencil in your hand and you're putting it in and you're doing it that way what I would recommend if you were doing something like that and if we've got Buster's tail here 
really I could do with a different colour one but if you take it wet the pencil okay make it nice and wet and if we do it over here this is a little bit slippy okay but once you've got your pencil and it's quite wet you can actually there come along and you can put them in but I will put them in wet okay and then you can just come along with all of these things and you can just literally draw them in okay and if you've got a bit of a wet pencil on the go like this you can put them in put them down there let them dry a bit and then buff them up just to give it that faded look again on armor i can understand it going around turrets getting in area stuff like that yeah it's going to work a lot more than it is on aircraft but literally coming down here you can see you can actually physically put these in wherever you would want them right the way down and you can come up here and you've got chipping colors and all these other colors and you can just come in physically put them in let them dry a little bit and just buff them with your finger and you can then just have a nice little watermark coming down in here all right so very subtle okay and that is the thing to these pencils don't think these pencils are going to come along going to give you bang it's in your face instant stuff it's not like coming in with an oil paint where you put an oil paint on and it's like bang you've got it you're good to go and everything else like that because clearly these are not these are going to take a little bit more sort of time to work in a little bit more time to get used to using them so forth and so on but there we go hopefully that's a nice open honest review for you at the end of the day if you don't really use pencils and stuff you're probably not going to be into it in any way shape or form i don't think it's a game changer or anything else like that up against modern oils like Abtai Lung and stuff like that, I think those are easier to use and you can blend them and do far, far more with them uh, and far, far easier. If you want to see a thing of that, just have a look at my latest Hornet that I've just done because that was done literally within half an hour with a handful of oils. To draw it with pencils, it would take a long, long time. You could do it, but it would take a while to build all that up and get it going and moving just like that. So there we go. Hopefully you'll agree with that. that isn't too much of a bad review on them, but there we go. At the same time, they're the same price as normal watercolour pencils or good quality watercolour pencils, but you get far, far more sort of range of colours and things like that to use. So at the end of the day, if you're into this type of thing, then actually they're not highly recommended, shall we say, but they're recommended.